Hola, bonjour, and annyeonghaseyo. That last one's Korean, and I'll tell you a story about that in a second. Today's video is going to be about the design plans for Frankenfoam. I finally got this thing to where I'm happy with it and worked out some of the kinks. And so today I'm going to build this with some fresh PVC. I actually spent two years in Korea growing up. My dad was in the military and we lived on Yongsan in Seoul. I've got a pretty interesting story about being in North Korea as a fourth grader and I'll tell that at the end of this video for those of you who are interested in sticking around. Let's get to the build of Frankenfoam. One of my goals with Frankenfoam was to make this as simple as possible. So this design uses basic fittings, you don't need a tap, there aren't any additional hoses, it's an all-in-one unit. Frankenfoam's main chassis is going to be this 2-inch PVC. And you can buy this in a two foot length. It's a lot cheaper to buy a 10 foot length and use it for other things. But I wanted to show you that it can be done with this. I'm also gonna make some connections with this three quarter inch. So I've got fittings for the two inch and fittings for the three quarter inch. And then fittings that connect the two of them. I'm actually not even gonna use this full length of two foot pipe, just because I really like this particular size, which I made by cutting this thing down a couple times, which is why I call it Frankenfoam. I only need about that much to mimic this design. For measurement purposes, that is 17 inches. For the diffusion part of Franken foam where my air comes in into the reservoir making bubbles is a piece of three quarter inch. It actually comes through this fitting here into the pipe. So I'm going to cut 10 inches for the diffusion pipe. In the output section of Franken foam, I'm also going to have another section of three quarter inch pipe that goes through the fitting. Because one thing I want to do is I want to stop my stainless steel pads about right here, which will give the foam space to come out of the pad and then kind of move out through the outlet port here. The prototype had a loose piece of PVC inside the fitting here, which we'll see when I open this up. For that, I'm gonna cut a five inch piece of the three quarter inch. Here are all the parts I'm gonna need for this project. Got a couple of bushings that go from two inches down to three quarters, a ball valve, two pairs of threaded uh, connectors, one to use with a cap, another to use with a extension like this three-quarter inch outside diameter to a three-quarter inch threaded bushing and a galvanized bushing here that goes down to half inch to connect my air compressor line. This T will go into the bottom, but I've got a plug for this side. I'll explain why I'm going with the T like this a little bit later in the design. Got a three-quarter inch cap, three-quarter inch 90 elbow, and a two inch T fitting. I was able to get all of these parts at my local home improvement store, Home Depot. Buying these on Amazon is not the way to go. The PVC stuff on there is really expensive for what you get. One thing I did have to get from Amazon was the stainless steel wool pads that are gonna go inside Franken foam to generate the foam. I'll put a link to this particular product in the description. Tools for the job in addition to my pencil and measuring tape are a rounded file, Teflon tape, so I need some PVC cement, a little bit of sanding paper, and of course, still need a saw to cut the PVC. Before we start fitting up, let me show you what's happening inside the reservoir here, mainly to show you how the diffusion pipe goes through. Taking a look inside, you can see that the three-quarter inch pipe here on the outside actually extends through this fitting 
into the inside and that's going to continue on down to about here inside the pipe. If I unscrew this connector down here, we can see what's happening on the other end. Which is I've got this piece of pipe here with some cuts in it that allow the foam to come out of the stainless into this smaller section of pipe and then out into the bucket. So I'm gonna accomplish that a little bit differently. It will be one continuous piece coming through. So I do need to, with my five inch section of pipe, cut in some of these uh, openings to allow the foam through. Reason being is that my stainless steel pads are gonna push up with the air pressure to this point. I did actually leave one of these in here, if you can't get the stainless steel steel wool, you can use these pot scrubbers. The foam when I made it with this was not quite as fine as I got from the stainless steel, so that's why I've opted to use that. The idea behind having a connector here is to be able to switch this stuff out periodically if it needs to be changed. Special thanks to GMB Kemp for becoming my latest member. And you're at the champions level, which gets you access to an exclusive live stream. So send me a comment. Uh, let me know when you'd like to do that. Also, you get this. And all videos coming forward. So thanks so much. All right, so I got my pipe perfed. And I just did this on the table saw. With the blade set low, just ran it across. Doesn't have to be perfectly even but I'm looking for enough capacity to let all the foam that would come out this diameter uh, to find space on both sides there. So now I need to prepare this fitting to allow this pipe to go all the way through, which is there's a little bit of a, a lip on the inside here. I'm gonna use my rounded file to file that down. All right, so that lip is knocked off. The goal is to don't have any kind of a bump anywhere along where the lip was. And now I'm gonna go ahead and prep the second bushing in the same way. I don't wanna squeeze this too tight that it changes the round on that bushing. Coat this well with some PVC cement and then I'm gonna put my perforated pipe through there. Uh, on this channel I show you my mistakes as well as my successes. Uh, this thing didn't go all the way through, it got stuck. So my recommendation for doing this is don't try and go all the way through. Just go halfway through, just enough to get it seated halfway through that bushing and then come in on the other side with another piece. I'll do that in this case and I may not have enough space here for this to hold but um, you'll get the sense for what this would look like rather than trying to go all the way through that and having it get stuck which it's designed to do it's the glue is going to set pretty quickly just come in halfway and then if the the gap between the two pieces of pipe is in the middle of this bushing it'll be just fine from a ceiling standpoint. So I'm going to throw a little glue on this See if I can't get this to stick. All right, for the purposes of how this should look, this is correct. <laughs> we'll check the functionality later when I put this thing under pressure. Although, this particular end of Franken foam, the pressure is the lowest at this point. Uh, there's going to be plenty of room for the foam to be coming out the bottom of that elbow here, so there's not going to be a whole lot of pressure happening right here at this joint. This should work, but we shall see. To set up for my second bushing here, I'm going to actually cut my 10 inch pipe into 
that will allow me to have these two pieces now meet in the middle based on our experience in the last fit up. Give this a good twist to seal that joint and I've left myself enough space on this side to put the diffusion end of the pipe in. All right, nice and snug. Two more things to complete the diffusion section. One is capping the end here. And the second is drilling a double row of holes in one side of the diffusion pipe. I'm gonna use the smallest drill bit I could get a hold of here, which is actually 5 64ths. 1 16th would be just fine as well. I'm just gonna drill a double row of holes here, uh, about a quarter inch apart. I didn't mention a drill in my list of tools. Um, you're gonna need a drill. Yeah, yeah, I know the trolls are typing their comments right now about how I'm getting PVC everywhere. So, stop typing. I'm gonna clean it up. So the reason why I've got the holes just on one side of the pipe like this versus say all the way around is because I'm gonna face this down. When it's inside the reservoir, it's gonna face down and that will have the air going down into the liquid even if the there isn't as much liquid left so the other idea is that it will when it's facing down like this it will prevent a lot of liquid from flowing back out of the back end down to the ball valve which isn't the end of the world but the less flow that goes out toward the air hose the better All right, now i'm going to set up for the t here start building the body First thing I'm gonna to add to the T is the diffusion pipe. So what I wanna do is make sure when this goes in that the diffusion holes are facing down. This opening on the T will face up. I'm gonna coat this with some glue and then give myself a half turn to put this in and then twist it into place. I had to pull this out of the clamp and muscle it to get it all the way in there. Gotta work fast with that PVC glue. While I have the T set up like this, I'm gonna go ahead and build the, the valve element. First, I'm gonna fit on the ball valve with the valve facing up. I had a comment a while back that recommended that for the best PVC adhesion to, to put cement on both sides of the joint. So, haven't done that up till now, but um, let's do that. Twist that into place. It gave me a little bit more work time too, which was nice. And now a small piece of the three quarter inch. And now my T-bracket, which I want to be parallel to the ground um, with this part of the T facing up. Twist that in place. Get that nice tight joint. On the prototype version of Frankenfoam, I had the airline coming straight in uh, this direction. I didn't like the fact that Frankenfoam on this end was sitting on the airline. So the stress of the weight of the whole foam generator was on that airline. So what I decided to do was to put a right angle in here. Rather than just doing a 90, I made it a T because this, that long section of the T here is now going to act as a foot to sit level on the ground. And that's why I'm going to cap off one side of this and then do the threaded fittings on the other side.
And on the other side of the T, which is gonna be our air inlet side, I'm going to use the three quarter inch to three quarter inch thread, which I'll glue in. And then I'll thread in the three quarter inch to half inch bushing with some Teflon tape. I couldn't find this fitting in PVC. It probably exists, but I kind of like having the thicker thread being where I go from PVC to metal versus the smaller thread because this will be taking in the air hose connector, which is metal. So I'm happy with how this turned out. Galvanize is the right way to go here to prevent this from rusting. couple of winds of Teflon tape here because this is the high pressure end of Franken foam so definitely want this nice and airtight <laughs> so yeah you're gonna need a wrench for this project as well I happen to have Big Mike out here with me so he's overkill for this kind of tightening but he'll get the job done Now finally I'm going to add the air hose connector. Make sure you get the right one for the type of connector your air compressor has. Mine is the industrial uh, versus the automotive fitting and they didn't actually have any of the straight fittings so I ended up with a swivel. That's not necessary but it'll work just fine. It's already got some uh, thread sealer on there so I'll just thread this in. Now I'm going to attach the reservoir cap which will connect with a 3 inch piece of PVC. Now I'm going to add my threaded connector here. Dirty hands and PVC glue do not go well together. <laughs> I opted to go with this connector for the reservoir because it's easy to open and close. One of the things I had to figure out though in the prototyping stage was this was leaky. This screw cap here was foaming, not a lot, but it was bubbling up uh, because there was air escaping here. I was able to fix that by just adding some Teflon tape to that joint. Just a few wraps of Teflon and it really made this joint just fine with a hand tightening. So you'll probably need to replace the Teflon there every now and then. And sometimes you may need to open this with a big mic. For the purposes of the test, I'll just use the hand tightening. All right, now I'm gonna turn this vertical and assemble the body of Frankenfoam. I'm gonna start with my 17 inch piece of two inch PVC. To the end of that, I'm gonna add my threaded connector here. And I'm going to put this half on the PVC here, saving the hex side for the part I will want to disconnect. I may need to use some pliers to do that and I'll want the hex on that side. Although that's an octagon, so whatever that would be. It's not hex. Now I'm gonna add the eight pieces of steel wool. Stainless steel wool, that is. Don't use regular steel wool. It will rust. You need to be using stainless. This Rogue River Tool stainless, I forget what the price was on that. The coarse was actually less than the fine. I don't know that there's that much difference between fine and coarse. The steel wool is all pretty uh, dense in terms of foam creation. So 
just purchase what's cheapest. This is the only thing I could not find at Home Depot. Um, so I'll put a link to where I got this on Amazon in the description below. I'm not gonna roll these up and put them in that way. I don't want a easy path through the stainless steel. I wanna make it as difficult as possible for the foam to get through this. So I'm going to sort of do a wonton with it. Squeeze the sides in, push that to the middle like this, and then feed that in. Whew. I will say this, this coarse stuff will poke you. And the last one. When that goes in. But before I assemble this, I need to add the output part of Franken foam to this side of the connector. I will say having a lot of glue on that made it a lot easier to fit that all the way down in. When I did the other coupling and I had to muscle it, I didn't have enough glue. Make sure you got enough glue to get those joints right. I can see how my perforated pipe comes through here. And I, I did this with a saw, but you could of course do that with a drill just as well. Just make sure you've got enough holes in there for all the foam coming in because the stainless steel is gonna bump up against this and that's providing your spacer to let the foam come out of the stainless and then find its way out through the outlet port. The test fit here tells me I still need to push that stainless down a little bit more so that this will thread properly. But I don't need to worry about pushing it too far because the air pressure will push it up to where it's touching against the end of the pipe here. I am going to use some Teflon on this joint as well. I always want to wrap Teflon with the threads so when you thread it on it goes with your wrap instead of against it. I am going to tighten this joint with Big Mike because this does need to be extra tight. It's also one you might open once or twice every couple of years or never. That stainless steel might never go bad in there. I just wanted the ability to check it. So you could simplify this job a fair amount by just taking that joint part out of it. Save you a couple bucks as well. Big Mike was a Harbor Freight special. If I see air coming out there, I'll tighten it up some more, but I think with that amount of wrap and that amount of thread, uh, this should be just fine. A little WD-40 will clean off this sticker residue. But Franken foam doesn't have to be pretty. He's a tool. The last thing I'm going to add is my 90 degree elbow here, which will hang over the edge of the bucket and I'm just gonna dry fit that. And with that, Franken foam is complete. Wait, something is missing. He is complete. <laughs> So I think this was a pretty easy project to follow here on the video, at least I hope it was. But I know some of you prefer to work with plans. So I've actually drawn up a set of plans for this if you'd like, and those are available in the store on my website. I'll put a link in the description below and a card up here if you'd like to check that out. But I'm confident you could build this without the plans. I believe in you. 
You can pick up the parts for Frankenfoam at your local Home Depot for about 30 bucks. I wasn't able to find the stainless steel steel wool, but I left you a link for that on Amazon in the description below. You thought I was gonna finish this video without testing it, didn't you? Not gonna do that to you. My standard mix is one ounce of seventh generation dish detergent, which has glycerin in it, which helps to stabilize the foam. One ounce of that to 16 ounces of water. Gonna give it a gentle stir, and then add it to the reservoir. So I'm going to waste the first part of the foam, which will be runny, into the smaller bucket. And then once I'm generating rich shaving cream consistency foam, I'll move it over to the big bucket. There's a problem when Franken foam is going under the knife. I'm sorry you had to see that, but I'm doing this so you don't have to. I think I have way too many diffusion holes. When I first opened the ball valve, there was a large blast of air. It's not what I experienced with the prototype. And I used a 1 16th drill bit on the prototype, and here I used a larger drill bit, and I think I actually had more holes. So I'm going to redo the diffusion piece and start with a lot less holes. I'm also going to put a threaded connector on the diffusion end of Frankenfoam so if I need to open them up again and add more diffusion holes, I can do that without having to cut. I'm going to start by shortening the diffusion pipe. I'm going to leave it with 10 holes. The rest of this will be inside the bushing. I'm effectively cutting it in half. I was careful to just go halfway through. The holes are facing down when the ball valve is up. One side of the threaded connector, the other side will connect to the T. Reservoir cap goes back into the T. And then the main section of Franken foam gets connected back into the T. So I've got 10 diffusion holes versus the 20 plus I had before. Teflon tape on the threads. as good as new. <laughs> of course, you won't need this fitting on your build and it won't be on the plans, but it is an option if you want to be able to fine tune your diffusion. But hopefully, I've done that work for you. All right, I've hooked up to the air and added my one ounce of seventh generation disc detergent to 16 ounces of water. Put that in the reservoir and tighten the lid and now I'm ready to test the foam. Again I'll waste the first bit into the small bucket and then once the loose stuff is out and the consistency is like shaving cream I'll move it to the big bucket which would normally have my Portland cement slurry in it. Doesn't today since I'm just testing the foam. Yeah, 
that's a nice rich foam. But this is probably the best consistency of foam I've ever had, actually. I am happy with this guy. I loved how the foot worked to sit on the ground and not put any stress on the airline. And hey, even my less than ideal fitting connection held up, so grateful for that. Of course, you'll do a better job than I did when you make it. Special thanks to my patrons and members for helping make these videos possible. I appreciate the vote of confidence. If you'd like to join me on Patreon or at membership, you can check out the description below. Uh, and I appreciate the support. Of course, you can find the plans in the description as well if you'd like to make it from plans. Also put a parts list in the description so you can grab all that there. In a couple more weeks, I'll be deforming my stackable aircrete rocket stove and we'll see how that turned out. In the meantime, I think I'm pretty confident with how aircrete works. I prefer a visual method in terms of mixing up the slurry to the consistency that I like and then putting the foam into the level of consistency that I like as well versus trying to weigh and measure. It's just how I work. As always, my mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share. Keep all the great comments and suggestions coming. And oh yeah, that story about North Korea. <laughs> I didn't forget. So when I lived in South Korea, in Seoul, one of the things we did as a family was go visit uh, Panmunjom, which is the city that's basically on the DMZ where North Korea and South Korea were divided after World War II. So the DMZ, of course, stands for Demilitarized Zone. And within that space, there were two sets of buildings, the South Korean side and the North Korean side. And then they had a little building in the middle where they would have meetings. And in that building were two tables uh, and there was a tape line between them and that was the border. One of the things that... Hey, the train's here. Right in the middle of my story, but that's okay. I'm just glad the train's here because there weren't any earlier in the video. I was wondering if he was gonna show up. So one of the things they told us before we went to the, the meeting building was do not wave, don't make any kind of eye contact with the North Koreans, don't, don't you know, engage them at all. They'll make it into an international incident. And me, as a fourth grade kid, I was like, I was trying so hard not to do that. When we went into the meeting building, we all stood around the table and I actually had one foot across the tape line into North Korea and I was fully aware that I was doing that. But I didn't get in trouble for that. In spite of my brain telling me to wave, to make eye contact, to do all the things I wasn't supposed to do, <laughs> I did a good job not doing that. But when we were back on the bus driving away from the meeting building back to the South Korean side, I was in the very back seat of the bus. And so as we were pulling away, I leaned down and in the back window I waved. <laughs> Nobody saw me. No international incident, but it's something that stuck out in my head. <laughs> a fun memory of uh, living in South Korea. Actually, I still have a great fondness for that nation. I love Korean food, um, and so that's why you hear Annyeong Haseo in my videos uh, frequently. So, thank you so much for watching and sticking around for the story if you did, and I'll see you next Saturday.